Libra, hello and welcome to your weekly reading for the week of September 8th through to the 14th. Because it's happening for us, Venus Day will have black, sorry, not black moon Lilith, but the moon crossing over Pluto. Friday the 13th is the day of the goddess. And for the moon, our emotional awareness, our emotional intel to cross over Pluto is indicating a major shift in the divine feminine energy. Yes, there's a lot of evil happening in the world. I was just reading about all sorts of pesticides that are being sprayed on organic produce and billion dollar companies are utilizing it. But the thing is, we are aware of it now. You know, 30, 40 years ago, all sorts of stuff we would spray it on our skin. Like think about DEET, you know, like how many heavy metals were in that. Just the smell of it, the alcohol stench is coming to mind. And I feel if you were a Libra like me, you care. You care about the quality as well as the quantity. You want quantity and quality to match, to overlap. On Friday the 13th, we will have Mars at 5 degrees Cancer. And this is just indicating that our thoughts do become things. So care but don't carry. Learn to shield your energetic and emotional field through mantras, mudras, walking meditation, and you will have the world at your fingertips. I love this week for us, Libra. It feels really good because we have the south node crossing through our sign, but it's also getting a boost from that lunar eclipse um, at five degrees Libra, which changed how we think about relationships. And we have Venus in Libra at seven degrees. So our feelings really matter and they're going to deepen our communication. They will lead us to be more curious rather than conflicting. And we Libras tend to be goody two shoes, homebodies, whatever, because we have cancer in our 10th house and our legacy can be to the home, but we also have a, a due duty to manifest what we desire, what we long for, to belong with what we long for. And it's different from cravings. It's different from what creates suffering in the world. It's actually what we do when we pray, when we actually put our intentions into our actions to meet the divine halfway in our lives and to be a blessing to God in this life. And further, wow, the Seven of Cups, as I'm talking about that, really just tells me that it's doing good things to have Saturn and Neptune in our sixth house. Maybe we're taking our day-to-day -day lives a bit more to heart and we're allowing for more of our essence to leak through. The next card I'm going to pull is going to be from the Goddess Oracle because they're speaking. We have the Five of Coins. So we're definitely taking time to get our thoughts together, to collect ourselves, and to face down some thoughts that usually would put us into those situations where we think but we don't act and then we go a little stir crazy being an air sign and we either choose to express ourselves down the line or we get caught up in entanglements of values that don't belong to us um, that goody two shoes being a pushover or being passive aggressive those qualities don't belong to libra it's often projected onto us because we allow it we just bite our tongue but for those of you Libras who are ready to grow, ready to put change into your energy field and change into the world around you, this is the week to do it. Cool. We have Benzai again. Beauty six, of course. This is the number of Venus, according to both Linda Goodman and Christopher Witecki of Serious Joy. And it feels like we are going to be a lot more receptive to our heart and to our heart's yearnings. So Benzai Jen Beauty, the empowerment message, you are at your most lovely when you are being yourself. Look at that. The Japanese goddess of beauty, Benzai Ten, reminds you that knowing, accepting, and honoring yourself as a spiritual being in a physical body requires self-care. Now is the time to support yourself by surrounding yourself with beauty and choosing to see its power in every aspect of your life. If you can commit to doing that, you will be amazed at how much more beauty arises to greet you. Yeah, that's meeting the divine halfway. Open your eyes to the wonder everywhere, even in the most unexpected places. Beauty waits to be discovered. Consider this before you turn away from a person, place, or thing. Beauty is everywhere. It's your time to find it, and the goddess Benzai Ten will help you. 
And for the alignment message, for those of you guys who that initial read didn't resonate with, your ability to see beauty in your world is diminished by a momentary lapse in self-worth. The goddess of beauty asks you whether you've been set back by a visit of perfectionism or others have withheld their support, causing you to feel small and insignificant. Whatever the circumstances, it appears that you have been hijacked by a sense of lack. Your alignment task is to restore your self-worth and regain your equilibrium by refusing to engage in these mind games. Oh, designed to dim your light. So that's what this could be. It's like you, you went to people for help and you didn't get any investors or you've been putting yourself out there and you haven't been monetizing yet. Big on the yet because we just have to wait until Jupiter finishes its parade through Gemini. If you guys can just hold out and invest in the beauty that's around you now and be really present with it, you'll find that the divine meets you more than halfway. It's like you go to meet the divine halfway and then you're swept and overflowed with gratitude, joy, and prosperity. So for this week, your alignment task is to restore your self-worth and regain your equilibrium by refusing to engage in these mind games designed to dim your light. Now is the time for a positive self-inventory. The goddess Benzai Ten is here to remind you that you are a bright, shiny, beautiful being of divine power and light. You are more than enough and the world contains more than enough beauty for you. This is a good place to dust off and start again. So don't allow any haters. Some things have come up for me. I was just sharing with a friend who's a Pisces. She's like my closest friend here of Maui. Maybe in my adult life, which thank you so much for being my friend. It's just like there are things that came up that were unexpected that deepened my connection. They deepened my desires because it proved to me how much I have and how much of a mind I've met my match to. And with the Seven of Cups, it's like you can be a blessing to God by choosing your heart, choosing to value yourself, and then allowing for what you've manifested so far to be something that is a foundation. Those Four of Pentacles speak to um, like fears around um, abundance and maybe stability. And this Fifth Pentacle is saying things are changing as you continue to show up daily and to continue to pave the way in, in faith. I know that the road to hell is paved in good intention, so it's faith that we need to pave the road in. Faith in ourselves, faith in the divine, and have intentions, but I would say that are led by your heart, led by your talents, and you allow for your talents to become your passions. The waterfall, inner power, unbridled confidence, claiming your place. Beautiful. All right, so let's do a little bit of insight for the various placements in Libra this week. So we have, um, I don't have the aspects for the day-to-day, -day, but there will be squares of Mars to the moon, to black moon Lilith, to the south node and to Venus. Um, over the course of the week. And those are allowing for emotional growth in our legacy to, I believe, come into a sense of more aligned belief, more investment into ourself, into our confidence, into the things that we cannot buy. The moon is going to go into Scorpio on the 8th, so... The quincunx of Saturn and Venus on the 9th, starting on the 9th, is going to, let's see, let me make sure it's a quincunx. Yeah, it is a quincunx. No, it's not. Excuse me, guys. Hmm.
Yes, I was right. Okay, there is a Queen Kung. So it's going to test our faith. We're going to have, and that's where the Seven of Cups comes in. It's not just like a test of faith because it's like anytime conflict arises, those are just emotional tests to see what we do, I think, to ground the energy, how we tend to ourselves, how we care for ourselves. If we have things sort of like, you know, dropping out of our life at this time, it's because the South Node is pulling the plug on the innermost parts of us, maybe the parts that we took for granted. Um, again, I love to speak about those times that we are pre-verbal as children because they inform a lot of our emotional foundation as adults. I love this. So with the Wheel of Fortune, we have the Six of Cups, which I think we're learning to have confidence in our ability to handle whatever challenges arise for us. Ben Zygen is here to assure that. And then following that Six of Cups, we have the Six of Swords deepening our communication because maybe our communication can come from a place of self-support rather than um, self-aggrandizement or um, self-doubt. And that's going to lead to... Hmm. This, the Three of Swords is just speaking to like getting away from this shallow, conflictable, um, conflictatory <laughs> communication that is blaming, it's shaming, it's guilting, it's not giving inner power. It's giving, I gave my power away, now what do I do? And I sense that with the Three of Wands, moving away from those Three of Swords, it's like we're learning to put down the blame game. And with that same creative potential, we're learning to put in our desire. We're casting our vote with our desire. And look at that. How interesting. We got the Six of Swords with that Three of Wands. So it's like the energy flips on itself because we start to value where we're coming from. And we're trusting. We're not being a victim. We're not playing victim. You see how it went from um, Six Swords and then we have Three of Wands, Three of Swords. It's like... We learn to use that creative potential to call in our soul tribe, to call in people who aren't trying to fight with us over every little thing. With the Three of Wands and this Seven of Cups, this is giving me um, the moon, because Black Moon Lilith is here, the moon crossing over Pluto. And I would say that's emotionally destroying our sense of limitation, and we are allowing ourselves to be a blessing to the divine by following our heart-led pursuits, by owning up to what it is that we want to manifest with God, with um, our heart out and open. And I know that it's a week out, but the partial lunar eclipse that's happening in Pisces is going to absolutely be a quincunx to Venus because it'll be a full moon at 25 degrees. So it might be a little bit different, but essentially we'll be coming into this ability to see ourselves with a new sense of value, a new sense of honor, a new sense of self-worth that raises our standards for the, what the world can return to us. This five of earth and shaman of discs, it's saying that as you continue to just show up, perform, do your duty every day just to honor yourself, honor your gifts and to refine them, you are sending out a blast. There are people who are finally picking up on you because it's like you have to hold that frequency long enough for people to find you. No matter what it is, it's like if you think of someone who's stranded in the desert or in movies, you know, it's like by the time they give up is when people start looking for them. Like, you know, typically if it's like a, not a tragedy, but it's like a drama. And we want to be our own savior in a sense. And we want to show up for the divine in a way that allows for the divine to conspire on our behalf. So Libra, this week is going to allow for you to claim your place in the world. That, that was at the end of this waterfall card, and I really feel that. Like, we're going to reclaim the witch, but in a way that is with our intentions and our intentions for being of service, for being in our alignment, in our sacred dance with the divine. Check out my 10-day miracle manifestation course, Libra. Currently, we're on day five, but it's a timeless pursuit. Just understand that when you work with this energy, you want to keep in mind what's happening. So stay tuned. Subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell so that you're notified to my subscribers. You all mean the world to me. Thank you so much for being here as I share my gifts, open up my talents, and channel. Let me know how things are going for you in the comments. Just know that I love to read them. I love to know what's going on for you guys. And until next time, aloha.